So the topic that me and Katie did our interview on was evolution, specifically the teleological misconception, which is that there's a goal or end in mind to evolution. The interviewees that I chose were high school junior and seniors, and then Katie did middle schoolers just so that we would have a wider range of ages. And then I chose three students in total. They were all three peer tutors, which are supposed to be the best people in their class that help out younger students. Um, the three that I did were a junior male, a senior male, and a senior female. Um, I originally chose was going to do the two seniors. The male, because he hadn't really demonstrated much biology content knowledge, and then the female because she understood a lot of biology content and seemed to help the students more. So that way there was a wider range in knowledge base there. And then the third student that I interviewed who was the junior male, um, his turned out interesting because he said that he does not believe in evolution due to what the church is saying. The protocol that we use was about 15 questions. Um, we started off by just making sure that students knew they weren't going to be graded and we were only doing this to understand what they thought. Um, we started off with the main question that what are the main features of a giraffe and hoping that they would answer that they have long necks. And so we moved into why do they have these long necks and then how do they get these and just went on and on. And then the last question that we asked was um, if they had ever learned about evolution previously. That way we knew if it was what they thought, what they learned, or anything like that. The things that were effective during the interview was, I believe, being one-on-one -on -one with the students. With all three of mine, we went into the hallway into the interview, and I think it really helped because they didn't have to worry about other people hearing what they said or other people making fun of what they said. They could just think of their answers and it was no pressure because it was just me and them out there. Um, I think one thing that did affect the way that it was, or some other things that we found helpful was asking how and why they thought that way. And Katie and I both noticed that with the middle schoolers and high schoolers that they would answer a question, but then we would have to probe and be like, well, why do you think like this? Or why do you think that? How did this happen? Which got most of the better answers out of them that way. Um, things that I think could have improved the way we conducted was having a better student-teacher relationship with them. Because they were the peer students, I had interacted with them, but not as much as some of the other students. And then I also think that having visuals from them to look at would have helped rather than just questions that with there's a visual visuals I could show here's what it looked like in the beginning here's what what it looks like now why do you think this happened and I also think that not having as much of a script would be better and allowing it to flow more naturally um, with the second and third one I did learn that it was just easier to just have my questions as a background but really just go on start out in the beginning and then lead into whatever they, their answers led into and not try to follow the protocol that we had as much. So some things that I learned from the students from doing the interview is that they don't fully grasp the concept of evolution or really understand the time process in which evolution happened. Um, a few of them did say that, oh yeah, change happens, but this is an evolution. And so I had to kind of ask why they thought that that was an evolution. And the main reason why they said that is because it didn't happen long enough ago. So I really learned that in students' mind, they think of evolution as it happening over a very, very long period of time, where in reality it can be just over 100 years or even less than that. It can be considered evolution. Um... And then they also started to answer that they believe that things can change, but this isn't considered evolution in, in the same way as that they think of evolution as something major changing rather than something just smaller. Um, between mine and Katie's middle school kids, we did notice the difference that 
mine had more of a vocabulary base that they could pull off of, so they could say change over time, evolution, and some of the like natural selection and those type of vocabulary words where the middle schoolers didn't have the vocabulary background that they were able to answer these questions. And Katie had then found out that the students had never been taught about evolution before. So it was their lack of knowledge about evolution and also just them learning it through various ways through like TV or websites or the church like my one student had. Um, the main similarity between mine and Katie's interviews was that all of them did believe that the giraffes had the long neck to reach the trees, but they didn't ever make the connection that this was due to evolution. And it's they didn't quite make the connection that the longer the trees were, the better they survived. So they were adapting. Um, they just assumed that, oh, they just always had long necks so that they could reach the trees. Um, ways that we could effectively teach the students better is I think would be to make sure that they understand that evolution is just changing over time where the time length doesn't matter. So it could be over five years or 5,000 years or 5 million years. All of it is considered evolution. There's not just like, oh, it has to be greater than 100 years to be considered evolution. It's change over any period of time. Um, I think that also when I ran into the student who blatantly said that evolution doesn't exist because the church doesn't say it exists, he did admit that things can change, but it's not considered evolution. So I think defining evolution in a different way, not just saying, oh, we've evolved since the beginning of Earth, but saying, oh, in the past 50 to 100 years, we've evolved. Because in religion, they agree that we've been around for over 2,000 years. So if you can just focus and say, we're going to look at the change of humans in the past 100 or 1,000 years, they can very clearly see, oh, this does happen. And so you can kind of bridge the gap between them not believing it happened because of evolution, but still teaching it to them so that they can see we have evolved. Like humans even have evolved since the beginning of time with all the inventions that we've created and everything else in that matter. Um, I think it's also when I do eventually teach evolution to address the teleological misconception since interviewing the students, they all pretty much had um, that misconception in them. And then towards the end when I asked about where they had learned about evolution, a few did say the church. Um, one did mention television and then school because they had a unit on it. And so I just think that teaching it in the more effective ways would help to eliminate these misconceptions that are present.